much for that beautiful performance. Up next is our second half, the, half of the show, fashion show. Yeah, we're going to give you a break from dances for a little bit. I guess that was the last dance, right? Yeah, it was. All right. Um, so we're gonna let everybody get ready here for the, the fashion show. If the girls could line up on that side and the guys could line up on this side, please. Uh, what we're trying to do is um, get costumes from every part of Nepal, like every region of Nepal, like Beth was talking about earlier. So we can give you a little glimpse of what's going on and after that we'll just have a short uh, welcome note and then we'll get to the food. I know you guys all wait. I know you can smell it. All right, so let's give them a second here to get ready. All right, the Dara Surwal, typically termed as the Labeda Surwal, the one the guy is wearing, is a traditional Nepali dress. The dress has several religious beliefs, identifying its designs, and has remained the same for years. The closed neck of the Dara Surwal represents the snake around Lord Shiva's neck. <laughs> Nepali dress for women is a cotton sari, gunyo, a cloth garment worn with a blouse, also worn in India and Sri Lanka. Next up is the mountain region. The Sherpas are an ethnic group from the most mountainous region of Nepal, the Himalayas. Sherpas migrated from the Kham region in eastern Tibet to Nepal within the last three to four hundred years. And you can see the Sherpas have a wrap around their body. That's to carry stuff in the back. So they, when they have to travel a lot in the mountains, it helps them out. Okay, followed by the Tamangs. The Tamangs are the most indigenous group of Nepal and have been for a while. And Taman literally means horse warriors in Tibetan, so it's a uh, Tibetan influence. The suit. The suit is a modern era clothing that the guy wears most commonly for functions. <laughs> I guess you don't need a description for that, do you? <laughs> oh well, we have to stay with the script. Um, the, the sari is a uh, piece of cloth draped around the body and it's the most simple yet the most comfortable features for women and it's commonly used in both India and Nepal. The kurta surwa which uh, she's wearing is a loose collarless shirt that's worn by many people on the Indian subcontinent, usually with a salwar or a pajama. This is kind of redundant, but the shirt is a garment worn on the upper half of the body, which is leaned more towards the modern era, but with a little bit of family touch to it. Hey, who has ever looked up shirt on Wikipedia? Come on. <laughs> All right, next up is the wedding dress. This is a typical and traditional Nepali wedding dress. Usually the bride is in bright red and golden veil to enhance her beauty. Um. The whole process here is actually supposed to be literally unveiling the veil of the bride. And since most of the, since most of the weddings were arranged in the past, this would be the first time the groom would actually see his bride. But this time we practiced it like 15 times. So you see. <laughs> the Lenga and Sherwani is next. We have the Tarai region. The Lenga is born from the period of Lord Krishna. It is believed that wearing a linga choli increases the beauty of a woman. The shirwani is a coat-like garment worn by men that resembles a dulet. Last but not the least, we have the taru dress. The dress, as you can see, is inspired by the climate. They live in the lower parts of Nepal where it's hot and humid, so it's usually made of cotton and uh, it breathes pretty well. Okay. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, please give a big hand here for we're going to go through the names here. Shiva Dahal and Sushant Bhushan. 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 Shiva